All right, this is going to be a basic video explaining the operation of the burner and gas valve. Uh, I'm going to put these documents at the start just so that you have a reference uh, so you can go back to during the video. All right, the light blue wire is L1. And it goes up to the main coil right here. Also goes to the flame sensor. Okay. Also goes to the hold coil right here. Okay. All right, and the blacks, these are the neutral. They're connected up there. And they will go to the hold and assist coil right here. And also to the igniter. See the black wire there? Uh, that's for the igniter. So really, even though there's a mess of wires, they're all tied together. And there's really only three points that you want to be concerned with. Um, if you just want to know if there's voltage coming to um, the whole burner valve system, then you can just put your meter right here on the black and the blue wire, um, test for voltage. All right, so I took the coils out. This is just a spacer for the, for the larger coil. All right, so when you take this plate off, you want to be very careful. There's this spring right here goes in here and it will pop out so just to make sure not to lose it these guys right here that's where they seal the gas in and on some of them they'll get old and you'll start to see cracks in these and it can just leak gas out the orifice um, if they're if they're in real bad shape, uh, mine are not doing too bad. So you can see in here, this is where the chambers are for the gas release. So the gas comes in here through the regulator, through a hole right here. This one lifts up and goes down into here, and then this one lifts up and then it goes out. So both of these would have to be defective for it to leak these seals, and I've seen that happen. Um, in that case, what I do is instead of replacing the whole gas valve, I just take this apart, and I buy a new gas valve, and then I take these out of the new gas valve and install them. And for this seal right here, it can also leak. And so what I do... Put a little grease around there and that'll help encourage the seal and these seals can also leak uh, so do the same thing a little grease on there uh, on those seals I've actually fixed a few dryers that customers complain there's gas leak and I fixed it in this fashion without having to replace the gas valve All right, so the setup we have here is only the igniter, the flame sensor, and I got my uh, voltage meter on the, the igniter, and I also got my current meter going. So what we're going to hear, and the coils are disengaged, so that's the only thing we have in the circuit. So you can see the power is on, and pretty soon here that uh, flame sensor is going to switch. We're, there, you heard it. Um, and you usually can't hear that because of the coils. But you can see we got 120 volts to the, and then we got uh, to the igniter. We got 4.3 amps, and it's going down. But you can see as um, when it first starts up, the current uh, on the igniter, and I'm going to show that in a minute, the current on the igniter. Um, starts out low and then it's climbs and climbs and climbs up to about 4.3 amps um, and once that reaches a uh, that uh, brightness level then it will uh, trigger that flame sensor
And to show you that that is actually happening, you can see the igniter, I turned it to the resistance setting on my meter, and the igniter's resistance is climbing, and it's going to keep climbing. Uh, when I tested it at first, it was about 120 ohms um, or so. It's not going to get there uh, just because it doesn't have enough time to cool down to ambient temperature before that flame sensor um, switches back uh, closed. Okay, and there it is. There's the voltage. All right, and that does it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, um, let me know. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks.